So he's getting this message from the angel. And why is it that Zechariah has a hard time receiving this good news? He's, I mean, this bright, flashing creature who has to tell him, don't be scared, tells him he's going to have a son. But Zechariah can't. He can't. He doesn't even believe it. He has he has grown accustomed to the condition of where his life has um, at. Maybe he's even thinking at the back of my, his head, "How am I going to raise a child? <laughs> How am I going to change diapers? I I I don't even know the newfangled car seats anymore, or the new toys, or the oh, and build a no. place for my child." Well, he, he says, how can I be sure of this? Like, it's not enough that an angel is telling him this. How, how, how can I be sure that what you're saying is true? If you're, if you're not convinced by the presence of an angel appearing to you right in the, in the heart of the temple, what is it going to take? So he's, Gabriel says, I'm going to tell you my credentials so that you know exactly where I'm coming from. He says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord and uh, Lord God, it, the Father Almighty. So he, he knows exactly who he is and what he was sent for. Do you think Gabriel? Do you think Gabriel's mad? When I hear, when I read this, I see him saying, "Look, I, I come from God, and if you can't handle this good news, guess what?" I, uh, I think he was extremely serious. He had a serious thing. He, he had a one message to give him. And he felt like Zachariah had no idea the impact of this message. Uh, now we've contrasted um, uh, the muteness that Zachariah stuck with for more than nine months because she's not pregnant yet. He's muted. It's like, we basically, you're not going to talk again until the words fulfilled both in Handel song, which is uh, thus saith the Lord. And then in Psalm 29, and I love the 29th Psalm because, and uh, I, I have to think that for the nine or 10 months that Zechariah cannot speak, that the voice of the Lord is booming in his head, that uh, he can't release it out of his mouth, but the words of God through the angel are like echoing back and forth uh, in his head. Uh, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. It breaks the cedars. It strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert, twists the oaks. Everyone in the temple cried glory. Well, Zechariah doesn't get to cry glory because he can't say anything. And uh, I guess if you can't hear something from the Lord, maybe the Lord will allow or even create circumstances to where you are in a posture of being able to hear him. Right. And when we, as we look at the Handel's Messiah, uh, it's thus saith the Lord. Well, it's a song specifically with the, with a baritone and the baritone is a deep, rich, commanding voice. Um, what you can imagine a, what the voice of the Lord sounds yeah. like. And so when you hear, when you listen, especially at the end of this, when you listen to the voice of the baritone, Imagine that is the voice of God. And, uh, and I like candle because uh, there's a sense of you're in trouble and even a little bit of terror. Like here comes the voice of the Lord and uh, don't mess with it. And uh, Zechariah did. And whatever was wrong in his heart, whatever was wrong in his heart uh, has a full nine or 10 months to be made right again. I used to be on a worship team and uh there was a singer that loved to um, sing and she was actually quite pitchy. She couldn't sing on pitch. And uh, I, I was very curious about why she would be on, uh, on the team with me singing right next to me. And um, although I wasn't the worship pastor at the time. So I went to, I, I, I bore with it for a few weeks. And then I finally went to my leader and I said, you know, why is this happening? And they felt like um, it was important to have them there uh, for the posture of worship. And I said, but you don't understand what it's like to, you know, sing next to somebody that yeah, they're not. They're off, they're off pitch, right. Yeah. And it knocks you off. It feels like you're standing there and somebody's like pushing on you the whole time. And um, I, and they said, well, Donna, sorry, you know, just kind of deal with it. This is um, a decision I, that I've made. 
And so one Sunday I was like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I am not going to do this again. I'm, I am so sick of this. And I very clearly, this was right before church service. I very clearly heard the Lord said, and then I will mute you. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'll take away your voice that it is not your job to, um, to make this situation right. And, uh, that was like profound. And I actually, the first few minutes of the service, I could not sing. I uh, tried. And then I was like, okay, God, you got it. Uh, it's, it's your job. It's not my job. And, no. uh, and then I got my voice back. And God wants to teach us so many things. If we don't receive the good news from him, then perhaps a period of silence uh, is good. Um, yeah. So that yeah. we can hear what he's saying. Something good is happening, but we don't perceive it as good news. Worship was precious to God, even if you didn't like it. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I will shake. All nations I'll shake the hands, the earth, the sea, the dry land. All nations I'll shake and the earth. shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom he delighted. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. 